you're listening to a 107 audio cast. We're here today for a team member interview with Lex Funk, also known as Lexis Vasquez, and he is a developer at 107. I am Ivan Stegic, founder and president of 107. Lex, hello. Hello. Hi. How are <laughs> We've done How are you already. today? I'm good. I'm good. All right. So it's beginning of September 2017. Uh, we're about 10 and a half years into 10.7. And you started with us two offices ago. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you remember when you started? I started with you three offices ago, actually. Three we had, offices. We had three ago. offices in the first maybe seven months of me being around, I think. You know, you're right. There was that intermediate office at the Northrop King building that I forgot about. Um, so you started in 2011? Mm, no. Yeah. 10. 10. I think my final semester was the spring semester of 2011. So, uh, and that's when I basically, you guys hired me the week the semester started. So, yeah. That's right. And I recall you sitting in, in my office back when we had two offices in a shared co, co space and bringing a DVD with your computer that had a flash presentation on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it was a requirement by uh, the MCTC curriculum back then to and learn for those flash. Of, those people listening, oh. MCTC is Minneapolis Community Technical College. Like, <laughs> right, that's it, yeah. Okay. Um, I think I recall visiting a student. It was like an expo of all the student work. Right, so at the end of the final semester of that program, print, web, and I think that year they were working with the video production program as well. We, they put on a, like a show, a showcase of all your work that you've done over, your, over the time. And you try to uh, get people to hire you. It worked. Well, no. I mean, you hired me before. I, That's right. <laughs> so the other I requirement for the program was to go interview at three places. And I went to... Well, so William Fendler, I started the program at MCTC with, uh, who basically self-taught himself. <laughs> he just dropped he did, out. Didn't he? And yeah. uh, he ended up working with you. That's and right. that, so I was still friends with him, and so we he kind of hooked, hooked us up, and uh, you know the rest is history. The rest is history. I guess it's You're, not really; it's still ongoing. It's I, still ongoing. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yes, so it is. the day. Uh, so yeah, you just mentioned like the flash. DVD and I was like oh do you want you can keep that you're like nah I don't want it and so I <laughs> took it and I was like I don't know how that interview went but uh, well actually I do know how it went because at the end you told me like you know I really like your composure and I think we should you know work together I'm like okay you know I was like cool I had to go get to class but an hour before that I had been I had stayed the night at my brother's who lived uh, just right down the street from there so I didn't want to be late so I was getting ready. I was um, going to shower. So I, you know, get in the bathroom. I uh, use the restroom or whatever, use the toilet, flush it. The handle fell off. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, get in the shower and, you know, I shower and I grab my towel from the top of the toilet, dragging in a glass dish of potpourri <laughs> and it breaks everywhere. So I have to clean this up, fix the toilet, get ready head to this interview and then um you know i think i got it all out of my system because you liked my composure but i seriously don't think my composure was on point that day i think it was i thought you were very um calm and collected and i liked your attitude i thought that was the best and most of all i think i liked how curious you were I don't think I'm allowed to say I liked how funny you were because that doesn't count. But <laughs> I'm, I like that too. I think I can say that now. That was that was a great interview. I remember you leaving and thinking to myself, "Boy, I I hope that he ends up working for us because I think we can. I think he knows William. I think they can work together well. I think we've got a lot to to learn." It was it was very exciting for me as well. Do you remember what you worked on when you when you started? I, I remember you started kind of part time because you were still you were still at school. Right. I think you had me working on 
I, want, I think it was mostly just learning Drupal. So one of the first things was, uh, like, I think a project that had already existed, a uh, client need, needed, like, a brand new view. And you're like, just learn views. I'm like, oh, you just want me to learn views? I'm like, all right, I don't know what that is. But so then I just started clicking around, and then, you know, William helped out, sort of, you know, showing me around and how that worked. And then, I don't know, I mean, that's how basically how I learned Drupal. I hadn't really had any Drupal experience before that. And that didn't matter. That did not matter. Your skills and your curiosity was the most important thing to me. And then, so then you started kind of doing views, and I remember we ramped up your time as it allowed, right. um, and you were doing some front-end development work, right? Yeah, mostly theming, not great theming. If we could go back and look at our code from back then, I probably wasn't doing an excellent job. But the work was getting done on time, so... Exactly. <laughs> and it was Drupal 5? It, it was, was 6, five. actually. I didn't actually work on Drupal 5 at all. It was Drupal 6. Was it really? Yeah, it was all Drupal 6. Oh, so. I thought it was Drupal 5. So your initial interest was in design and in front-end and in theming. And it's been, it's been a, you know, six years at the, at the least um, that you've been with 10.7... How has your job changed? I mean, you've obviously evolved in skill. I would, I would say you're our senior developer. You're responsible for a large number of hours every month with our clients, particularly one of them. It's certainly changed. How, how has it changed? Well, so when, yeah, when I first started, I didn't know a whole lot, but that didn't really matter. I just learned a lot faster and quicker. So yeah, I, I was mostly a front-end developer to start just working on theming. The part I liked about it was the PHP part of theming. I didn't necessarily care for the CSS part. I still kind of don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little, it's too, I, at first I liked it because I was like, oh, this is what coding is, you know? And then like I got more and more curious about how things work and not how they look. And so that was kind of the driving force behind trying to learn how to build modules and going from there and trying to get, you know, a client has this really unique functionality that they want. And I was like, well, how would I make that work? And uh, that that's kind of the thing I like to, to work on. And so those are the problems I, I get to solve now and don't have to worry too much about how it looks. Do you miss that? Uh, no, I don't. I, uh, I actually have been working with front end now again, kind of just doing both right now for, for this one client. And I get discouraged fast because my CSS skills aren't like top, you know, top of the line, but with, you know, Jason and Jill there to help and code review. And <laughs> I know like right away when we started working on this particular project, I asked Jill to code review something for me. And she's <laughs> just like, she's just, what are you doing? Don't do that. <laughs> no, it's not how you do it. It's not 2000. Eight anymore. He's just like it's CSS three now. I don't know if you know. No, that. Have you noticed? <laughs> He's like it's called Flexbox. You know that? I'm like, I don't, you know. don't use tables anymore. No, Lex. I wasn't using tables, <laughs> but might as well have. You float this left. You float this left. You float. No. It was no. it was fine. I I've uh, Flexbox froggied my way into loving Flexbox. <laughs> so. And so your job has changed a lot, and it sounds what you like what you're describing is you went from front end and being curious about how things work more to back end. I would describe you as a full stack developer because you have all of those skills. You just end up spending your time in the back end because that's what you like doing, and that's the work we have, and so there's a nice there's a nice synergy there. Can you speak to how our tools have changed? I remember when you started, we we were still using Subversion, and our deployments were really manual, and we we had one repo for everything. Right, yeah. have, things, have things changed, Lex? Yeah, so when I got hired, I didn't know about, like, Git, what do they call that, version control? Yes. <laughs> I'm, see, I'm learning my vocabulary. I have a glossary. Uh, Where is that thing? Uh, it's just this... But I, uh, <laughs> for those of you listening, he was holding up a post it note. It was a blank. That's his philosophy. <laughs> um, so, the so for, yeah, as far as version control, I was like, I don't know what this is. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, back when we were at school, even they were like, oh, this is how you get stuff to a server. So, you, you log in 
right? And you use FTP. It wasn't even SFTP really at the time. It was like right. you just drag the files over there. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> well, it was easy. Okay, <laughs> but then I learned when I started. I didn't know a command line, anything. And um, so I got the git binary installed. And that, I mean, that's pretty easy. The documentation's great. So you can do that on your own. And I did all that before, you know, my first day. And then you guys were kind of showing me how it works. But then that's when Git Tower was kind of out. And so we started just using that. So it was just a Git Tower as a user interface for Git. And so we were working with that. But yeah, we had <laughs> ten seven at the time had one GitHub account and a large repository for all the clients. <laughs> and um, <laughs> uh, it's tough to admit, but I was told it was a, a financial issue. I don't know what it really was, but <laughs> it really uh, was the issue, <laughs> <laughs> right? And so we decided, well, because GitHub can get expensive, right? And at the time, their pricing model was very different than it is now, right. and was more expensive. So, so it didn't make sense for us. But I mean, we were a small shop then, and we evolved. And so what what happened then? When Les got hired, Les Lim, he uh, just he's just like what are you doing like he basically set up our main infrastructure and we started working with a, a hosting company so we didn't have to pay monthly fees to to github but we just had you know some shared space so we could keep all of our repositories together but you know each separate so that's kind of how we evolved there when Les got hired, he evolved us really quick and got us into some very important best practices, I would say. And we had some sort of automated deployment at that stage as well. Right. It was nowhere near Ansible or any of the no. um, automation we have now. So but that is so that was probably 2011, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that sounds about right. And then after that, we kind of continued to evolve. So then we started, Les once again introduced us to, to SaaS and we started working working that way with all of our theming. After that, I think we had a little bit of a dating period with Bootstrap because everyone was using Bootstrap, but we didn't like it. it <laughs> no, we dropped that girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> Went back to just kind of just building a theme, you know, a custom theme for every client. What do we have now? <laughs> you should probably know what we have now. So now we, well, so this was all Drupal 7, right? So right. theming's evolved uh, in Drupal 8. And so we don't really have anything. We still do custom work, but we've got the, this current project we were talking about earlier. Uh, we're using Bootstrap 4, which just got its beta release, I think, last month. It's been great. I like it again. I didn't like it before, but Good. now I, I love it. So we, we use Bootstrap now, as far as I know. Well, you're the person <laughs> to ask. I, I guess so. We have more, I guess, person, I more knowledge I than to, I do. I guess I get to decide. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, so we have, it's not just me using Bootstrap. We have at least two other developers using Bootstrap on this project. And I think they would agree that this is, that might be the way to go right now for us. But yeah, so and then but as far as like deploying code, that has also evolved since 2011 um, when tests showed up she uh, basically once again tore apart our infrastructure and you know fixed it and now it works great everything it just hums works. along doesn't it, it really she's does. done a wonderful job yeah she has I see it. it's kind of you push and it deploys and you really don't have to worry about it too much I think it's I think yeah you're right, right. she's and, done a great job the other area where we've or, well, I guess where the whole sort of development side, web web design side has evolved is Photoshop is no longer the main thing people use. Like we used to get a Photoshop document and then there it was make make this look like this and make it work. I think <laughs> ten seven got into trouble a lot because their tagline used to be pixel perfect. And That's so what it then was, um yeah. You know, people were, <laughs> were printing off uh, web pages and showing us that they weren't pixel perfect on paper. All right. So <laughs> I'm going to stop you right there because my next question was going to be what's the best thing we've ever done? But I'm going to switch that and ask you what's the worst thing that we've ever done at 10.7? Oh. Uh, and just maybe that printing out web pages is going to jog your memory because it's certainly jog mine. What's like the worst thing? Like, and What's the worst thing we've maybe had to do? Oh, that yeah. that Okay, so yeah, there's this one project 
there's been a few paper printing projects <laughs> but has out there. there. A few? I can recall one. Come on. There is a few. I don't want to name names, but there is a few where they would just maybe some of them were better than others. Like they would, you know, show us on paper and we would say, well, maybe change this, change that, change this or whatever, which was easier to do. And they would go back to right. Photoshop and change it. That was a pretty normal workflow. Uh, <laughs> so, but this other <laughs> project, well, what they were looking for was kind of something that you would see back in the flash days. I would say they wanted some animation. They wanted cut out. I think it was a law firm. And it was a law firm. They wanted, you know, photos of all the lawyers and they kind of wanted this parallax effect where, you know, you could scroll in and they had these wonderful photos. They're great photos. They're beautiful photos because uh, they are, I mean, they had some nice, you know, blur going on and it, yeah, it looked cool and it would have been cool, but they're like, all right, so then can we have this animation go here? And like, so when you click, you know, on their left shoulder, can this pop up? And like, <laughs> when you, you know, click on their watch, it says something else. And I'm like, really? Mickey like, Mouse does his hand. <laughs> well, then, yeah. So then at that point, like, we got too deep into this project. And, you know, they were uh, literally laying out the website with pieces, kind of like a South Park episode, but how they used to do it when it was all paper. <laughs> like, they had cutouts of all these lawyers, and they're like, this is how we want them aligned and we're just like all right we're not we, we're not, we're not gonna be this. able to do this at this budget and yep. um i recall that and that was <laughs> i think that was the worst thing and i'm glad we were able to pull the plug on that and say sorry we can't finish this right i, I mean we still were able to deliver a photo and a bio like a normal web page i Um, wonder if we could actually dig that code up somewhere i bet we (laughs) don't have we we always joked about uh having like if you type in like the konami code or something uh that the the cutouts would like talk and do (laughs) sort of a monty python sort of show for you i recall that (laughs) but that that probably like we would be willing to do that but not do the animation they do want so exactly so that didn't make any sense (laughs) That I, I recall days like that, and I think we've evolved as a company. Um, I'm, I am going to go back to the original question I was going to ask, which was, what is the thing you're most proud of that we've done since you've been at 10.7? And it might have been something you did yourself a long time ago. It might have been something right. you did last week. It doesn't even have to be code-related. What What do you think? I Well, proudest for me, I, it, it is code-related. And it's not even a, like the company doesn't even exist anymore. It's a project we did. And it was the project I pretty much took the lead on first for the back end development of a specific module that was needed. It was, it had, so it, it helped having you there as a mentor because uh, it was maps related. And so you knew, you had done a lot of work with maps. Uh, like Google Maps, so we weren't using Google Maps for this. I think you can say the name. I, I don't think, I think that's well. That's, I don't oh, of the project or yeah. of, it was Bike Everywhere. Bike Everywhere. That's yeah. right. So I don't. And I think they didn't have a huge budget. They got their own mapping data. Actually, they went out and got it themselves. And I can't remember what map system we were using. Park GIS. Okay, yeah. So that's what we were using. And uh, so I was, you know, in charge of getting these plot points. And so what the what the app would be was you, you would map out um, all these bike trails or bike-friendly routes. And so it would draw it on the map. And so we worked with a company. I think they were out of Salt Lake City. They provided the mapping software. Um, and so we were working with them, and I was doing the back end part of Drupal to get it all to kind of talk. And that was kind of the first time I built a module for a client, and it worked. <laughs> 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 and so that was a proud moment, and it launched, and everyone was excited. But then, like, Google Maps started getting more evolved, and <laughs> all the routes were on there. And, uh, you know, they were even in Star Tribune after they launched. There was some, they did an article on the company, and, uh, that was, you know, I thought it was cool. Like, hey, I've worked on this, you know. But then they um, shut down maybe a few months Unfor- later. Unfortunately, yeah. the timing for them was was unfortunate to where Google Maps was doing and what they were doing because they did have curated routes that were incredible. It was like um, around but the, just time the timing too. was bad. Yeah, I think Apple Maps had come out too after that. They weren't doing bike paths yet, but well, I wasn't even really working when it launched, but. 
that's kind of like yeah there's a, a mapping push at that time kind of kind of weird that's true that was a that was a great project i i enjoyed working on that project too back when i was actually still maybe writing code a little more yeah. code than i i tend to write now which is zero really Right now, you're at home, as am I, I and we're, we're right. a distributed company. We were traditional office-based company for the longest time. As you pointed out, you've been with us for three offices of those. <laughs> right. And it's been, well, I guess half a year now that we've been distributed. How have you enjoyed the transition? And I mean, just for so that everyone's aware, you were kind of one of the first people who said, I want to do this full time while we were testing it one or, once or twice a week. Right. I found myself being able to work. That was always the big fear of, of everyone, I think, was like, will I be able to stay focused at home and be able to work on my projects and not do laundry or something. <laughs> like, I, don't I don't think laundry is ever a problem. <laughs> <It's> a <distraction. laughs> like, <I'm, laughs> Who well, wants to do that? I don't know. I mean, but like, You're right. Uh, it kind of solves itself because you don't need to do laundry because you don't have to look presentable. So <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to wear clothes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I um I, I don't know. I've been enjoying it. I think it works out. We've established a few different lines of communication slack has helped out tremendously even with clients we have some clients that we use slack with and it's i mean it's it's very seamless if we have video chat we we use google hangouts or we'll use i mean the slack phone call thing isn't very good but i'm sure it'll get better um we use zoom we're zooming right now we um, are yeah, I think so. Anytime you need to talk to somebody on the phone or face to face, I mean, everyone's accessible still and comfortable in their own environment, I would say. Is there anything you miss about the office, whether it's the corner or seeing people go in and out of the bathroom outside in the hallway? I, I don't. I don't miss that office one bit. <laughs> Honestly, I don't miss the neighborhood. The neighborhood's changed completely since we moved in. We it was it was underdeveloped at the time, but we got in and got out at the right time, I feel like. I don't miss driving there every day. I don't miss driving in the winter. There's nothing about the office experience that I don't get other than me being able to to verbally Lex bomb people or <laughs> to verbally just, you know, have a casual conversation because now I have to do it in Slack or call somebody and we don't ever sit on the phone and code at the same time, but maybe we should start. That's actually not a bad idea. We should maybe have like an open Zoom room that we just, you just log into and you leave the video on and it's on while you're working. Might, maybe not, but I don't know. Um, it, we could try it. We could try it. Could you define what a Lex bomb is? <laughs> My disk profile. I don't know if you've gone over this in a previous podcast. No. no. Well, so I don't, do you want to explain what that is? <laughs> sure. So um, as part of the evolution of the people and the company at 10.7, we had some growing pains communicating with each other and making things amazing. So we did some work to uh, figure out what our culture was actually centered around with the mission and values and so on. We did some wonderful work with employee strategies here in Minneapolis. And we came up with that mission and vision and the values. But part of that was doing this DISC profile. So it's essentially an analysis that every person who works for 10.7 fills out a questionnaire. It's administered by employee strategies. And you kind of end up uh, having a dot that is located on a circle. Then this, there are four quadrants in the circle, and each quadrant has its own properties. And the dot ends up being somewhere, and then there's a profile around, like a distribution around that dot. And so we all know what we are. The benefit of that is it quantifies us in a certain way using a valid theory. It and it allows it us to, it to talk about how we interact with each other, which I think is the, the important part here. Yeah. So Where are you on the disc? I'm a solid D, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which means, um, I don't know, like, it's dominant, I believe, is the, the word they used. But I Some of the characteristics are get bored, bored easily. easily. <laughs> it says I get bored easily. <laughs> So I get bored easily, whatever. And when I get bored, I f just decide to post random things in Slack or 
basically it's trolling. I'm trolling people. But I used to be able to do it in person, and so it seemed less like I was trolling people. But now it's like... It's obvious. It's obvious. Because there's emojis as well that come with the lens bomb. Sometimes. Sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) There's... I don't have any Lex bomb examples, but... Most of them are um, political in nature and controversial (laughs) in nature. And usually they're complete opposites of what you think. And so it's it's nice just dropping that bomb and seeing how people (laughs) react. Some people take it seriously and then realize they've been had, which... Well, I think amusing to see. <laughs> yeah, I usually any of the religious stuff is out there for you. Um, <laughs> there's, um, I don't know, depends. Coding principles, I get less going, maybe a little bit. That's true. Um, Jason, aka Beef, we can get Beef. him going pretty much on anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fun, but it, it definitely uh, it's usually a Friday afternoon thing. <laughs> that happens, but uh, yeah. that's why on Friday afternoons my ears are usually perked because <laughs> I'm watching the things in Slack that I know I shouldn't react to. Right. Well. So at the beginning of our um, of our audio cast, I referred to you as Lex Funk, and I didn't oh, say yeah. DJ, I didn't say DJ Lex Funk, which it's maybe either, I should have. It's either or. Maybe either either or. Right. You're a music head. You're an audiophile. You love the sound and you like to make beats mm-hmm. and you you recently took a sabbatical. What do you like to do? Do you want to talk a little bit about what you like to do outside of work sure. and kind of the music business and what you're doing for fun right now? Right. Well, so the, I mean, the music you hear at the beginning of these audio casts, I produced that. They're awesome, by the way. <laughs> it's the same music every time. So it's yeah. the same one. <laughs> Until you start paying for it. <laughs> so I like to, yeah, I like to produce music uh, electronic music hip-hop music the hip-hop music i like to sample old records i have a bunch of old records around laying around yeah so like i i use ableton live and i have you know turntables and samplers and synthesizers and i just like to make noise and sometimes it sounds good and sometimes it doesn't a lot of times times it does you got to iterate on that stuff Um, i've heard i've heard the things you've shared and I've always enjoyed them. I wish you could put a little more breakbeat into them. <laughs> yeah, that's I know. I know you're a you're a drum and bass head from fan. <laughs> from the past. Yeah, I don't have a lot of drum and bass going on. You know, I have I, I have a whole bunch of CDs. I actually have some records that are drum and bass. Oh, yeah. up, actually, up here in the attic. If you ever want to sample them, I'm happy to loan them to you if awesome. you like. Yeah, I would definitely check those out. All right. After we get off of this, I'm going to go look in the bin and see what okay. I can pull out. All right. Um, All right. So, yeah, what, what I like to do, though, is, you know, I like to do uh, maybe a remix of something or songs out that's, you know, that I like or whatever. I mean, it's kind of sometimes I'll have an idea. I'll go for a walk and I was like, oh, maybe I want to do this or I hear a old song or something like an old like jazz song i'll be like oh i want to take those samples Sample that. yeah and then you know i'll just loop it and make i don't know something new out of it and you were able to do some of that while you were on sabbatical right yes <laughs> i i was able to i haven't released any of it that was we're going on almost a year ago now mm, and i haven't yeah. released any of it um, you know good stuff like wine takes time right so i think so mm-hmm. the thing about most of it is i haven't really I haven't really, I've listened to it and I like it, but it all has this sort of s- central theme and I don't know, it's, it was a weird time. <laughs> <laughs> it was like during the election and it was, it was, it was a high, uh, like sort of a tense time in the world at the time. So I would say the music is a little bit dreary. I would describe it as dreary. It's laid dreary. back. It's, I like it, but it's just something, I don't know. It's not a lounge session. It's, it's more of a yeah. It's it's really somber it's, session. It is a little bit. I don't know. So a bit that that being said, like there's just the track we use for the podcast intro. I'm calling it a podcast, and it's, call it a podcast. <laughs> maybe I'll start doing like that, that one. Just I mean, it just sort of was maybe a half hour, of just kind of messing around with different sounds, and then just kind of just came out came that came up, and I. I only ended up with the loop that you hear, but that's basically it. So, 
I love it. Yeah. I, I didn't realize it was um, original content. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, it, like, I thought, oh, Lex made this. And, and then, like, you're talking about it now. And what I'm thinking is, oh, yeah, he made this. <laughs> he, act, yeah, he created this. This is cool. So now, I, like, it's even better for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> well, I have, I have my last question. Is there something you're excited about that you're going to be doing or that we're embarking on as a company over the next three months, six months? Well, I mean, as far as the company goes, I think we have a couple new projects coming up that sound pretty interesting that I might want to get my hands into a little bit. Yeah. There's always, you know, some something going on with the current project I'm on, so they're doing big changes as well. So that's big theme change yeah, in big Drupal seven theme changes, yeah. redesign changes, and that's that's been fun. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the main thing. I'm trying to plan a vacation, a real vacation for maybe spring. I don't know when or where, and I'm not really sure what I want to do. I don't know. I think one cool thing would be to go see like a, like an Indy car race or like a formula one race somewhere. I think yeah. that would be kind of fun, um, to see live and hear live and feel it. Uh, yeah. I think that would be a lot of fun. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know where. But that's kind of the thing, I guess, the exciting thing I'm planning right now. I'm excited for you, too. I, I, uh, I had the opportunity to go to a Formula One race, but wasn't able to make it while I was overseas. And so that's still something that I would love to do as well. I, I think I told you this. Growing up, I wanted to be a race car driver, but then realized that that was pretty <laughs> risky, especially with the crash and the speed and things. Sure. So I focused more on wanting to be uh, an engineer for a Ferrari oh, or, right. or, you know, um, McLaren. But here we are making websites. So. <laughs> right. We're basically, yeah. but it's, they're it's, like race cars and under the hood. People don't get to see that though. Thank you very much. Lex Funk for joining me. Um, that brings us to the end of this podcast. I'd like to thank you again for sharing the time with me today and please visit us on 107.com and keep an eye out on the 107 blog for future audio casts and podcasts. 